want you to turn first to Romans 12, Romans 12. We're going to talk about something tonight that is very, very important, and I trust that you won't take it lightly. I pray that you have not taken it lightly, because the subject we're going to speak on tonight is a subject that can get you in a lot of trouble if you're not careful. But it's a subject that God can use to take you a long way in your Christian life, to take you to a place where you'll hear the Lord one day say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. We're going to talk about how to find the will of God for your life, how to find the will of God for your life. Now, I don't know where you are in your travels with the Lord. I don't know how mature you are. I don't know how much you know about the scriptures. I'm glad that you're here, and that we're going to take our time, and we're going to talk about this matter of how to find God's will for our life. We're going to go to Romans 12 first, then we'll go to some other verses, and then we'll move right along. But let's begin in Romans 12, one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, we're not going to be in a hurry, so let me stop there for a second. Let me read that verse again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I was in my office today, this afternoon, and I happened to look up on the top shelf, and there was a Bible that I had worn out years ago. I hadn't taken it down from the shelf, I don't know how long. I pulled it down, I opened it, and to my amazement, on the inside of the cover, here were these names, autographs from some pastor friends of mine, Dr. Lee Robertson, Dr. J.R. Faulkner, Dr. Bob Gray, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida, and a whole list of preachers that made a difference in my life. Those men made a difference in my life. And I have to thank God for them. Now, do you know why God could use them to change the lives of young men and young women? To uh, be a, a man that can take a church that's struggling and turn it around and keep it going. Dr. Bob Gray went to Jacksonville, church just about closed, and he went in there and turned that thing around. Uh, and, and other pastors that I love so much. And uh, when I saw that, I just said to myself, thank God for men like that. And I could name others. And uh, so he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of Another. Now let me just make a quick comment here. We need to find God's will for our life so that we can be a blessing to others in our home and in our church. And uh, this passage of scripture in Romans is a powerful passage of scripture. And he says that he deals with us, every man, according to the measure of faith. We could talk a lot about that. For as many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Did you get that? 
You know, at home, father, mother, and children, they live together in one place, and they influence one another, don't they? This church, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, we influence one another in one way or another. Sometimes it's not good influence. Men and women get mad, they get all upset, they lose their temper, they just get all out of sort and they didn't like it because this member got this and uh, well, I didn't get it and I didn't get this position and uh, all of that, the service was too long and so forth and so on. Uh, God's not pleased with that. God is not pleased with that. This is his work. This is his work, amen? And we're members of his body. That's what we just read there. We're members of his body. And so we're being warned here of how important it is to what? To work together with one another. So he says, listen to this again. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Listen now. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait for our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Watch these verses. Let love be without dissimulation. Don't let anything tamper with your love one for another. You hear what, see what he's saying there? When you come to a church like this, we're serving the Lord, we don't want anything to stand in our way of serving God. And he, we don't want any, any disruptions of, of our faith. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another in brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as the life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with Good. That's several verses, but I wanted you to have them tonight, and I would like to think that you'd go home and you'd stay close to these verses and read them. We'll go to another passage in just a little bit, but we're talking about how to find God's will for our life. So I'll go back to verse 1 and verse 2 once again. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Have I done that? I'm asking myself that question. Have I done that? Am I obeying what the Apostle Paul said by inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Now you understand, Paul wrote that down, the Holy Spirit told him what to write. And so it's really God that's saying to you and to me that our bodies will be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. It's our reasonable service. And then it goes on to say, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, how can a Christian know the will of God. 
I have had young men and young women, uh, young couples come to my office and they'd sit down and they'd talk about their life and so forth. And then they would say, Pastor, how can I know God's will for my life? I want to know. My wife and I want to know. We want to know. And when they say something like that, I'm thinking, thank God for you. God bless you. Now, don't raise your hand. But you're here. You're a Sunday night crowd. I want to ask you, how important is God's will in your life right now? And I'm asking myself the question. Are you in God's perfect will right now? Right now. Are you in his perfect will? Now, when you and I get into the perfect will of God, number one, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed. Look at the men and women in the Bible, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, that gave themselves totally and completely to God. They made no bones about it. They said, you, we belong to you. I belong to you. Now, a lot of them died for their commitment. But they're in heaven, and one of these days at the judgment, great white throne, to the judgment seat of Christ, they'll be highly rewarded. The Lord will say to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Think about the men and women that lost their lives because of their service for the Lord. And so this passage in Romans talking about our Christian life and service. If we're going to, listen now, you heard the verses that I read. If we're going to not be conformed to this world, then we'll have to be in the center of God's will. Amen? You agree? We have to know the will of God for our life. You see, every Christian, and I'm going to phrase it like this, Every Christian should be keenly concerned, keenly interested in knowing God's will for their life. Now, the devil will battle you. He'll battle me. But listen, God will take you and use you as a powerful weapon, as a powerful tool against Satan's hordes. Now, yes, I think I could say honestly, we are in the last days. Now, we've said that for a long time, but we're seeing things happen now we've not seen happen before. Things are coming up and coming out and are happening now. We've just not seen that. And uh, we need to be in prayer. Now, here's what we need. How do you know what's going to come around the corner? How do you know what's going to happen to you tomorrow? to me tomorrow, then I would do this if I were you. I would make sure that when I get up in the morning that I put on the whole armor of God, that I might be able to withstand in the evil day. That's what the Bible says. The devil, if you love Jesus and you love his word and you love souls and you want to see people saved, you support missions, Satan will come after you. I'm not going to back away. He'll come after you. He'll come after me. And so we need to be ready and have our armor on. And so, yes, we need to know God's will for our life. Now, are we seeking his will? Um, we need to let the Lord lead us so that the steps we take will lead to being right in the center of his will. Now, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But I want you to go back now to the book of Luke, chapter 11. The book of Luke, chapter 11. And here, and I'm, I'm coming here to this because this is one of the most important facets of the life of a believer. And I got something I want to say there to you members that are, are members of our church. This is very important, so please listen. Now, I know I'm going back and forth a little here, but we'll get into our outline, and we won't be able to get to maybe three points tonight. But anyway, I want you to follow along with me in chapter 11 of the book of Luke. He's talking about Jesus' doctrine of prayer. 
Now, once again, we will not be in the will of God and labor in the will of God unless we're prayer warriors and we know doctrine. Now watch. And it came to pass as he was praying, Jesus, in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. I guess if I would have been there, I'd have said the same thing. I've got a feeling Jesus prayed like no one else could pray. Now, you say, yes, but he was God. But now, wait a minute. At this time, he was in a body like our body, and he had the same battles that we had. He hurt. He got tired. He got hungry. He was hated. And we can just go on and on and on. But you know what he would do? When the going got rough, he had come away by himself to pray. Maybe we ought to learn that lesson. When the going gets tough, we come along by ourselves, or with our family, or with our church, or our pastor, or whoever, and pray. So watch. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Have you ever asked the Lord that? Don't answer out loud. Have you ever asked the Lord that? Lord, I feel I need to pray. I feel the urge of praying. Will you teach me to pray? As I get down my Bible and read, will you teach me to pray? And God can do a lot of things with a man or a woman who prays. Now, he says this. Teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, now listen, Jesus is going to tell them how to pray. Now let me say this to you. Several years back, I started following this pattern myself when it comes to prayer. Now I'm just an ordinary country boy, and I'm no great anything, and I'm no great preacher, but I, uh, I love to preach the Word of God. And it's very important. So now watch. He says, he says unto them, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Let, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at, night, at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, Lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is uh, in his journey, and he's come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And uh, he from without shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto thee, though he will not rise and give him, though he is his friend, now watch, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. He's a lesson here for these men. Sometimes the Lord is waiting on you and waiting on me to get ourselves right so he can answer prayer for us. Basically, that's about what is being said here. But I want to go on down now to verse 9, a very, very important verse. Look at verse 9, and uh, we'll read down a few verses and then come back to it. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. To every one that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is the father, will he give him a stone? If he ask a fish, will he for the fish give him a serpent? Or shall he ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? 
Yea, then being evil, uh, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. I love this. How much more shall your Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? There is so much there. But there's so much truth there. Now, I'll get into my outline in just a moment, but I want you to go down to verse 9. I learned a very valuable lesson from these verses quite a ways back. All right, now watch. And he says unto you, Ask, and it will be given you. If you're going to have God to answer your prayers, you don't have to ask. Amen? Uh, you can't just sit around and wait for him to throw it in your lap. He expects you to pray. But now wait a minute. When we pray, we better be on right footing with him. We ought to be in the center of his will. We ought to not be out of his will. We should not be in talking and going places that we shouldn't go. Obviously, that would keep us from him answering prayer. But isn't this a great verse? Ask, and it will be given you. Ask, and it will be given you. Now, please, please, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Last week, the first of the week, I was going through a, a battle, a real battle in an area. And um, I was in the office, and I was just upset. You know, you know how you get upset? You can't get a hold of it, you know? And I backed up, and I just leaned back in the chair. And I said, Lord, I need an answer. I need an answer. I'm asking you for an answer. And so help me. I sat up to the desk. I turned to a passage that I was about to read, and the answer was right there. And I said, thank you, Father. And you know what I decided I was going to do from that day forward? If I have something I need to pray about for the church, or for myself, or my family, you know what I'm going to say? Lord, I'm asking you for. I'm asking you for. So the first thing he wants us to do, and now I'm correlating this with being in his will, okay? He wants you to ask first, and then if you're going to go deeper in the things of God, he wants you to seek. You're asking first of all, then you're seeking, and what will happen? You'll find, and it'll be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. You are my friends, you are my church members here. I want to ask you, when you go home and out in the days ahead, go back to these verses that we're reading here and just go through the things and ask God to help you. Now, we're talking about how to find the will of God. Let me give you three or four thoughts, and then I'll move on in just a minute. Put down these things. Number one, if you're going to know the will of God, you're going to have to yield to him. If you're going to know the will of God, you're going to have to yield to him. I don't know how many times I've been around people, and I've done it myself. Uh, I find myself in this kind of a situation or that kind of a situation, and I get all upset, and I fuss, and, and, I, and I want to blame the Lord for it and blame other people. Uh, have you ever gone through that? I have. I have. But you know what I had to learn? Shut all this mischief up, throw this stuff away, and yield to what God's trying to say to you. Oh, and by the way, if I'm going to find out what God wants me to do, where he wants me to go, then I'm going to have to know something about the book. You agree? I'm going to have to know something about the book. Here it is. The answer, <laughs> thank God, is right here. Amen. And by the way, the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Settled in heaven. A million years ago, 
a million million years in the future, this old book will still be here. Amen. So the first thing is yield. Is yield. Yield to the Lord's way and His call. Number two. If there's unconfessed sin in your life, confess it. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So yield first and then confess. Yes, Lord, I'm guilty of this and I want you to help me. And then the third thing is pray. Pray. And that's a great thing to do with it and then study, and then wait. And I know that's a lot, but, that, but that's, the, that's the truth. Now, let me just go to the first point, and then we'll uh, have, have prayer and we'll go home. Um, uh, let, me just go, let me go down the page here, and we don't have time to get into all of this uh, tonight. But uh, first of all, there will be yielding. The second is confession. The third is praying then study, then wait, then guidance through the Bible, then guidance through Christians. Aren't you glad there's some men that know God and they know him so real and he's so close to them that you can go to a man like that or a woman like that and find help? I've known some pastors and I've known some friends of mine that were older than me and had graduated from college and seminary and so forth, man, they, were, they knew God's word. They walked with God, and I was just so thrilled to listen to them preach. The power of God uh, was on their life. And God will use those Christians to give us guidance. And then he'll guide us through circumstances. He'll guide us through circumstances. And then he'll guide us through the Holy Spirit. Now, I only mention these tonight. God willing, next Sunday, we'll start with these and we'll go down one by one and we'll see what the Word has to say about each of these. And notice I said, first of all, yield, that's first. A person must present himself to the Lord. He must present himself to the Lord. And then we'll talk about these other things. Now, I believe these things are very important. Now, let me say this. You're going to fail. There's not a man in here that's not going to fail. You've already failed. You've failed miserably. I have too. And you're going to fail again. And the devil's going to keep coming after you. But you, know how, you need to know how to respond. When he comes, you need to know how to respond. And what we're looking at here, I think, will help you and will help me. And uh, so God can use us in a wonderful, wonderful and mighty way. Now, we have a week coming up. And while we're out there, let's make sure we have our tracks with us. And let's witness to people and look for people to help and uh, to encourage. And, you know, God is thrilled when he sees his church witnessing. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. But everybody can't go. Everybody's not called to go. But you can work right where you are. This is your Jerusalem. This is my Jerusalem. And we'll talk about some other things that are very, very, very important. But when you think about this matter of finding God's will for our life.